All right, I think Mesmerita's still here. So Mesmerita, do you want to get your build built? I have no idea what your what your the name of yours was. I gotta look at. Oh yeah, you sent me the link to the website. Where are you on here? There you are. Wow. Oh. Built. What is this? What is this? Is this a? This is a. This is a. This is a website. Wow! Look at that picture. That's like seven jillion damage. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. Is that still your current best? Three hundred thirty-nine thousand. Is this the most up-to-date thing? When did you update this? Because I've I've already reviewed this. We watched the video. Updated as of the twenty-first of twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just double checking. We'll take a look at this because I've already watched this YouTube video. I'm not going to do that again. I have to stop you here, Stream Tom. Now I understand the confusion, because the builds are very, very much alike. But this is a new build, new thread, and a new video. The old build was 10 rogue, 4 fighter, with the weapon specialization line. But I've changed that to 13 rogue, 1 fighter, with higher sneak attacks. Now, let's get back to the review. Uh, I'm assuming that this detail, all the things that are here are up to date. Right? That is correct? Like, this is all up to date? Just before I start digging into it? Like, some type of, some type of ground animal underground? Yeah, rogue fighter fighter. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look here. Build high crits via Hunt's End from the Shadow Epic Destiny. Fury shots I have, but didn't expect for paralyzing arrows. Instead, I use Shock Arrow Stance for vulnerability. Not bad. Death gives you more damage. It's free Damahe. Yes, Shock Arrow Stance at cap for the damage. And I use Paralyzing Arrows while leveling. Now, as for the vulnerability from the electric stance, it's not as reliable as uh, using Chaos Bow with fetters, but it's a second source, so it should stack up faster. 100 plus key and concentration, so 5 times 10k stars plus key regen. That's a good as a baseline. I think that's one of the hard things is getting your key properly on this type of character because you can't regenerate it on you any other way. It'd be cool if you could regenerate key with bows. 5% for shadow arrows whenever you can get it active. PRR, 70 MRR cap. Ooh, that one hurts. Plus 50 UMD. I mean, come on. Who can't get plus 50 UMD? If I could do it on my Warforged fighter, first like first life character, come on now. I mean, it is a feature, and it does traps. That's pretty dope. All right, this number, uh, obviously, look at it right here. Um, you just straight, you're straight up making up this number. I'm just gonna make this big so everyone can see. There we go. Uh, yeah, you straight up made up this number. It confuses me why you say this, Strim Tom. <laughs> I'm not making anything up. Um, I I try to detail uh, what is happening with with the number. I mean, there is uh, obviously a, a plus sign missing. It um, jams the base damage and the sneak attack together. I will uh, post uh, the raw video file later so you can see exactly what I did and I'll try to zoom in on the combat log for the actual number. And uh, in a minute you are going to comment on uh, store potions. I, I would just like to mention that uh, these can be gotten in game from Mysterious Remnants. And uh, I also have some potions from uh, Commendations of Valor, which are also uh, pretty plentiful. So, 
Yeah. Um, 339,843. Let's examine this screenshot. First of all, store potions? Come on now. Uh, we got uh, action boost. Uh, we got uh, many shot. Is that the through the mist proc from using uncanny dodge? Hell yeah, it is. Although, wait, are you only at 10 stacks? Did you do that at 10 stacks? You could have gotten a higher shot than that. Still impressive, though. That's with everything. Still working on helplessness augment, but this is my current best. Yeah. So there's your thing. You got 249 ranged power. Not too bad. Got, uh, I, I, wisdom is lower than I was expecting, but I'm looking forward to seeing the actual build. Yeah, that's the problem, is you gotta be in combat. Like, archers and other types of characters, they gotta be in combat. So you got 13, 6, 1. Seems fine. The one I'm assuming extra feats. You also don't need 14 rogues, so that just makes sense. Um, Fort Bypass, 98%. Uh, your character has sneak attack damage. You have the 31, 49, and 13 D6s. Um, how do you, how do you, um, get sneak attacks... I'm curious as to how you strip sneak attack immunity on targets, other than deception. Ooh, you hit a soft spot here. <laughs> I, I cannot strip sneak attack immunity uh, by myself. I don't have assassin's trick, and I'm not even wearing an improved deception item. Uh, I guess I, uh, I rely on uh, my teammates in... Uh, in gameplay situations, I mean, uh, I try to let others take the aggro and, uh, yeah, get my sneak attacks that way. And the helplessness damage 65%. Yeah, unbuff stance. Uh, that's where you start. That's where you started. Your feats, let's see, barbarian dilettante for the extra health. Rapid shot, precise shot, zen archery, precision, pass life rogue, path of fists of light, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff makes sense. Opportunist gives you 3% bypass, which is not bad. Um, you take improved evasion. Um, with dreamscape. Now, you use dreamscape. I don't use dreamscape. Why do you use dreamscape? I love dreamscape. Even though it's random buffs, they are all pretty good buffs. And I do it mainly for the 30 range power, but occasionally you'll also get sprint, which makes you run faster than a horse, or you can get a bonus to your skills, to your saves, uh, all kinds of stuff. But of course, if you don't like it, you can substitute with, the, for instance, Mass Frog, it is a wisdom-based build after all, so um, with an item swapping, you can uh, you can make Mass Frog work. Also, Past Life Paladin for Divine Favor? The way you say it really makes me question this feat. Um, it is... It is DPS, so that's why I took it. But I understand why you're not happy with it. Past Life Paladin for Divine Favor? I don't like that. It's only plus, this is plus three to hit and damage luck bonus. If you cast a scroll of prayer, or if you have somebody that casts prayer, that overwrites that. And instead of Past Life Paladin, ugh. Yeah. Do you have to do anything with Dreamscape? Do you have to, like, press the Dreamscape button? That would drive me insane. If more spent on hard for range power, if less cut back on falconry. Okay. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Past Life Paladin, I think, is, is a little sketchy for me. Because you already have Past Life Rogue. Uh, for sure, for the extra hits. Um... So let's a higher number. This is let's get a higher number build after proccing lots of things on cooldown items. Yep. Uh, okay. Take a look at some of the actual half elf stuff. 
Um, everything in the tree here makes sense. You're just building up to this. There's nothing you can take that would actually be any better here. You don't need any of the armor bonuses or anything like that. And you already get the wisdom. You don't it's the only stat that you use out of Arcane Archer. Again, you have Paralyzing Arrows, but you don't actually use it because you're just going for the 41, everything up here. Um, if you have additional spell points you're not using from this character, you can take Inferno Shot, by the way. Inferno Shot's pretty useful for just straight uh, adding free damage. It's technically free, and you can use it on every single attack that isn't uh, an arrow of slaying or anything else. Um, it costs like one spell point, I think. Um, it's just instead of having, you know, the banishing and the smiting arrows, which I don't know how much you use. Obviously, if, smiting arrows is not too bad, but banishing arrows, I don't know how often you use that. Might be better. Smiting and banishing arrows are stances. They passively benefit my paralyzing stance uh, so that's why i took took them i uh, i pretty much only use smiting arrow stance occasionally everything else is here falconry you took all the good stuff the fortification penetration everything else is good and then if you have more if you have uh, uh 18 ap 86 ap if more spent in harper for range power if less cut back in falconry um, is there anything I would change about this? I would say, especially since you're going for a sneak attack, I would say probably not putting more points on Harper Agent, just because you have the Rogue Assassin Tree, which gives you more damage anyway. Um, because you could just go into the DDO wiki here, Enhancements. Go into Rogue Assassin. And easily right at the bottom you can get sneak attack training. So you get an extra sneak attack die. That would be a better place to put some of your early points. Um, it's not a lot, but still, like the first three points grabbing sneak attack die, that's an extra d6 of damage and plus one to hit versus trying to get up here for the uh, ranged power. You could still do that, but that's like an easier low-hanging fruit. Um, another thing that you could also do... I'm trying to think of how else you could get even more damage Quest on one single hit. Received. Somewhere else. Um, this is a good question. This is a great idea, Strim Tom. Um, I might aim for the ranged power in Harbor at at the end, but um, while while getting there, I'll uh, I'll definitely uh, use your recommendation here about uh, the assassin tree. So thank you for that. Also, Realms Down. Welcome to the stream stream. How else would you change this up? Again, I know, it. obviously, you know better than me about a lot of this stuff. You have all of the hit chance here. I just, I like having both the falconry attacks, but if you have enough ways to make monsters helpless, obviously it doesn't matter. Another thing is it depends on your wisdom if you can actually get it work. Yeah, the entire assassin tree is low-hanging fruit. Yeah, for sure. And I would definitely recommend using that. I, I really like having the knockdown because it's a helplessness damage that's really good. It depends on what you get your DCs to, though, because it's a trip attack. Um, it goes against strength. Yeah, single and AoE blind. Yeah, the AoE blind doesn't cause helplessness, so just keep that in mind. Uh, your character can only cause helplessness through single target blind, so you need someone else to cause a monster to be helpless for you, for the most part, um, with this type of character. Because even paralyzing arrows doesn't cause helplessness. Ah, this surprises me. Uh, of course, I should have known it would have been a little overpowered with the uh, area of effect helplessness. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've, um, I'm going to take your suggestion and uh, swap for trip, trip attack. Yeah, the AoE blind doesn't cause helpless. It's only the blind and the knockdown. And paralyzing is not helpless. They technically are helpless, but they didn't. They the and pretty much if it's AOE and easy to access, they didn't make it helpless because that would be like it just adds extra power that something doesn't need. Um, yeah, so it's one of the reasons why like greater shout doesn't make something helpless um, because it could do that, but then you're making something helpless and doing damage with one spell, and it's probably too many things. It's one of the reasons why. Um, at least that's tra traditionally been the thought. Then you have Vein Freeze. And Vein Freeze is Vein Freeze. So, you know, what are you going to do? And Dire Charge. So, I don't know. 
But traditionally, that's the way it's been. Alright, concentration. These stats don't matter. Now you play in Shreddy. Oh yeah, and then you've got Pin and Whistler. So you have a lot of attacks on this type of character. I didn't even look at this action bar up here. But yeah, look at this action bar. You've got... Uh, where is your attacks? Where do, where do you keep your attacks? Yeah, you got uh, Coordinated Strike, you have Blind, you have Pin, Whistler, you have uh, Arrow of Slaying. You've got a lot of good stuff. And you take and Final Strike. Outside of Arcane Archer, which is already a good tree. I agree. I think buffs to bows should not be limited to Arcane Archer. Um, yeah, so you're using Shrouded Champion with Sense Weakness, Martial Hymn, Dance of Flowers, Enlightenment, and Cocoon. Enlightenment is for the regen, which makes sense. You need that. Dance of Flowers makes sense because it's extra damage. Martial Hymn, Sense Weakness, and Cocoon. All of these things are good. Um, I have no complaints about any of these twists. As far as the actual spending through the tree, it makes sense that you're going for Stay Good. It gives you good damage on your attack, so you don't need good damage from your weapon. It's also the only, like, alignment DR bypassing you need. Again, the main issue that I see is Audience of the Queen and Dreamscape cause you to stand still and do nothing. And that is the antithesis of what I find fun in, fun in video games. Um, so, if you can handle doing that, then yes, that's great. But I could never do that. Yes, both uh, Dreamscape and Audience with the Queen will uh, make you stand still and uh, take you out of combat. Audience gives you a heal and a buff. And of course, uh, Dreamscape has all those uh, random buffs. But uh, I'd like to point out that uh, you can also use Dreamscape uh, defensively in some situations. If you pull some aggro and you can't really handle it, you can hit Dreamscape, which uh, makes you immune for a little while, and uh, that could make the aggro shift back again. Um, and again, Past Life Paladin, there's got to be something in there that does that does more damage than Past Life Paladin. There's got to be something. You already have combat archery. You already have improved critical. I don't know what it is, but I really hate this feat. <laughs> because for those of you that don't know, feats, past lives, heroic, paladin, soldier of faith, um, gives you uh, divine favor three times per rest. And gives gives you plus three to hit and damage um, for like a minute and a half. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, weapon focus gives you two ranged power and that affects every attack. That's not a bad option. If you had access to completionist, I mean, come on, it's right there. Um, hell, dude. Even since you have so many multipliers, even something like power critical is probably no. It's the it's actually worse than power critical. I can't believe I was about to say power critical was a good feat. Oh, oh, I'm glad I fixed that. Uh, yeah, I'm even looking through this feat list. And I got nothing. Anyway, there's that. Um, but I don't think I would change anything here. Um. Oh, uh, I don't know how often you use Healing Spring. I would probably dump one point in Healing Spring here and instead put it into the Absorb Elements because it's 5% Elemental Absorption and that's really good. Alternatively, you could also put it into Track for the Minus to Armor class on monsters. Um, track is going to give you more damage against bosses and the Absorption is 5% damage absorption. It's not bad. I just I don't know how often you rely on uh, this. the The benefit of the elemental absorption it has it doesn't have a duration. It just lasts forever, uh, which is awesome. You just put it on yourself and then it's done, because um, it absorbs five percent elements. 
Also, you know what? Looking at it zoomed in, look at the tree back here. I never look at this tree in the background. It looks good. This Epic Destiny looks really good in the background. I, like, never look at it. Like, I don't know how I just don't notice it. Yeah, if, if like I said, if you like Healing Spring, then for sure make sure you're using it. But yeah, I've never been a big fan. There's your electric spell power. So your gear set. So you're using Deadly Rain. Uh... Uh, oh wait. Wait, do you not have an artifact? Yeah, Sigil of the Triumvirate and your weapon. Wait, is this all the filigrees that you have? Or am I missing some filigree? Because I feel like there's, this is just your weapon and not the artifact. Because you've got Deadly Rain, 2, Long Shadow, 2, Spines of the Manticore, Wreath of Flame, plus Wreath of Flame. So, Spines of the Manticore, 2, Crackshot Negotiator, 2. So you have Crackshot Negotiator, 3, for ranged power. No matter fact, but no pick. So you've got 3 Crackshot Negotiator. You have 4 Spines of the Manticore. Uh, three Wreath of Flame for the permanent Flame Shield. I'm assuming that's because you've got the Wreath of Flame range power rare in the other one for the extra range power. Yep. No problem, that's fine. I'm assuming that any of these that don't show up here, the three that you have in your artifact is Wreath of, Pla Wreath of Flame range power rare, uh, Spines of the Manticore slash Wreath of Flame range power rare. 10 5, five. yeah. That makes sense. You got the range power, melee and range power. So yeah, it's pretty much just all in for range power. Plus you're also picking up permanent fire shield, which is just sweet. And 5% fire absorption. That's actually kind of crazy how that can work with the range power. Alright. And I'm just going to do a quick review because I'm not a genius at this. Twisted Willow. Isn't there like a, a bow that's supposed to be coming out in the next raid that's really good? I don't know. Yep. New raid will have a long bow. It uh, actually uh, made me uh, change a feat. I used to have a blinding speed for the ranged alacrity, but the new bow will have uh, alacrity 25%. So that was uh, what led me to uh, take the improved sneak attack feat and uh, what dictated my uh, class split. Wildwood outfit makes sense. Tharn's goggles, helplessness, helplessness, and helplessness. Oh, that's the helplessness set bonus for the artifact. Yeah. Uh, family recruit sigil. Uh, oh yes, that makes sense because you're not using that. Tharn's goggles and the ring of prowess. That's fine. Being slave lords. It, belt of ram. Cloak of balance. And litany of the dead. For you're actually using the litany, which is impressive for the MRR cap. Yeah, new bow from the Fey Raid when we get it. And the Epic Purifying Quiver is the best. And then the con augmentations that you'll use. Um, do you actually have the um, helplessness already? Or sorry, the helplessness uh, augments? Because that would be impressive if you did. Um, overall, obviously build looks really strong for what you're trying to do, which is deal as high damage as possible. Um, your filigrees are fine. Um, other than this, the tree is pretty flawless. You didn't miss anything that has any damage. I just, I can't stand uh, Audience of the Queen. <laughs> so I never use it. Only MRR cap so far. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But the MRR cap is going to help out quite a bit, assuming you have something to fill up the MRR gap. And then as far as the stats, yeah, I, I feel like it's a better choice to go with the Assassin from the Epic Destinies, or sorry, the Assassin Rogue for extra stuff. Um, because with Assassin, you're able to pick up both the sneak attack training for the extra sneak attack die, even more sneak attack training, um, if you don't have a poison stance, you can also put this on with your weapon attacks for an extra D8 that scales technically with melee power, but it could work. Um, you can even get more critical mastery if you wanted and more sneak attack die. Um, so that's probably a good one. Mostly purge death penalty? Yeah, that's another that's another example, yeah. But yeah, other than that, I mean build looks really, really strong. I just I really hate this pass life paladin, man. I hate it. I know why you have it, but 
Like, if anyone is in your party that can cast Bless, which is Warlocks and Favorite Souls and Clerics, or not Bless, Prayer, Prayer overwrites this. Um, so it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, you can't rely on other people to give you Prayer, but, like, this doesn't work if you have Prayer, so... I don't have a good suggestion, though, other than something defensive. If you're going for offense, there's pretty much nothing else you can take. Because um, you already have all the offensive feats. But yeah, uh, looks good. I Like I said, I like the build. Um, it looks fun. I would never play this ever. I have I couldn't do it. Yeah, epic reflexes would be a good defensive thing, for sure. Um, also, your character has uh, 100, <laughs> 115 PRR, so you're probably just going to die when monsters hit you. Depending on your difficulty setting. So basically, yeah, just don't get hit. Don't get hit. Yeah, epic reflexes would be fine. Um, if you had epic reflexes, then you don't need to take improved evasion either. But although, to be fair, if your reflex is only 83, then you're probably going to fail a bunch of reflex saves anyway because you don't have a saving throw. Um, I guess there's. I'm assuming you already put like a plus resistance augment in all of this. Or no, you actually, your augments are kind of taken up by everything. You barely have any augments left. Oof. Yeah, so that's what I would probably do with that. So hopefully this was helpful, and uh, I gave you some insights as to the, the character. Um, obviously your items, you've got that sorted out, and uh, for the most part it looks pretty good. I can't see anything that would be wrong. Originally I was like, why family recruit sigil? But then I realized you need um, armor penetration, and then also you can change the set bonus, which is really nice. And your filigrees. Yeah, you have the resist augment. Man, that's with the resist 11 augment? Oh, jeez, Louise, man. And that's the other problem is when you focus everything in on uh, ranged power, is that oftentimes you're going to miss out on some of the main stats. Your wisdom obviously not as high as it could possibly be, and then also you're missing out on um, some other stuff. Some uh, possibly, possibly a little bit of hit chance. And it sucks that this gives plus 4 dexterity. It makes sense, but you can't even use dexterity with your bow. If only you could get dexterity on the bow. You're in a max spot, but I think I'd prefer Spellcraft for a bit more damage. Yeah, possibly. I don't know if you need to max out Spellcraft. Just because Spot allows you to shoot monsters at a time. Unless you, like, have it memorized exactly where they are. Anyway, this has been, uh... The Niter. Half-Elf, Rogue, Muncher, Arcane Archer. It's the Kaita. Just... Spelled a little weird, kind of like fighter, because he he started out as a fighter. If you would like to play this character build, um, guess what? It's in chat. No, it's not, because my chat's disconnected. In chat now. If you want to play this, you can. Um, I I don't recommend this one. Not because I don't think the build is good, but because it's, uh, this is, uh, I would have stress running this character. This is so not how I play the game. <laughs> so, for me, I don't like this character build in terms of the playstyle, most likely. But that does not mean the character is bad in any capacity. I'm not, I'm not insinuating that the character is bad, just that I wouldn't play this. But I'm glad you like it. And it is powerful at what it does. And I'm not, again, I'm uh, like the numbers speak for themselves. I just can't do it. Could you imagine if this was actually forty-six million damage? That'd be sick. This would be gross. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next build. Um, then put this one through. Got you. Got you. Thanks. Thanks for your thoughts on this. Anytime, Esmerita. I hope it's I hope it's been helpful for you. Um Yeah, thanks a lot, Stream Tom. Thanks for the build review. You've made some uh, very good points. But uh I don't agree that it's stressful. I mean in the ideal circumstances you're gonna be hanging a bit back, firing at range. Maybe you have a caster for crowd control. 
and some DPS for the aggro ma management, maybe even a tank. So you can sit back a bit safely um, and and try to stand still to build up Archer's focus and uh, stand and deliver. Let us uh, try to compare it to uh, a base uh, pure ranger. The ranger is gonna have some uh, favorite enemies, of course, for a bit more damage against select targets. And it can also use things like a weapon swap in for uh, deadly rain. Then let's compare it to um, a Monkja, level 6 Monk, level 6 plus. It can be in fire stance for another critical multiplier, which you don't uh, have to think much about. It, uh, it just goes off on a 19 and 20 roll. Then I took it a bit further with Rogue and the uncanny dodge filigree and of course the sneak attack. This was uh, the logical progression uh, in my mind. Now the stressful part, I assume you mean uh, buffing up or micromanaging all the, the tiny little damage buffs. <laughs> um, I see it no differently than a melee uh, using a prowess swapping or a righteous fervor. M maybe it uh, takes a little bit longer for me, but uh, in the meantime the party will have time to build up aggro. Here at the end I'll include the raw video file of my uh, crit record. Then you can judge for yourself how stressful you think it is buffing up. I think uh, buffing up is definitely worth it. I mean you can easily double or even uh, triple your damage. But um, I'll... I'll let, let the video speak for itself. Uh, thank you for watching everybody and uh, have a great day. This was uh, Mesmerita reacting to Strimtom's build review. I was just getting comfortable.